Hello and welcome, RC Shim on the desktop with a quick tutorial how to get the most out of DJI DVR because it's quite powerful. It gives us some OSD values and I found a little trick to use a super view filter if you happen to use Premiere. If you don't have Premiere you can uh, just watch half of this review and see how to successfully bake the subtitles into your videos to make it look nicer than in default. Roll the intro. First of all, you have to download my little script here, which converts the SRT files, the subtitles files from the DJI. So a little explanation. If you just open one of the video files, it will play in the default video player. You see I use 4x3, not 16x9. If you open this up in Videolan, which is also a free player, VLC player, you see this thing already understands the SRT, the subtitled files, and displays them, but not in a very nice way. And if you're just interested in playing back your videos for your own enjoyment and to yeah, make a debriefing of your flight. And this could already be almost all you need. If you just want it a bit nicer, I show you one additional step and then you're good to go. If you want to use it in a video project, then I have something more advanced for you later on. So we take a, a quick look into the SRT file. It's just a text file with a timecode and the OSD values. No, you cannot have all your OSD values that come from Peter flight. They just show kind of the voltage and the bitrate delay and stuff from DJI directly. Sorry, we all hoped it would be better, but to reformat the SRT files to look nicer is to double click my script. It goes through all the SRT files in this folder and creates those new files. We have them side by side, the original version and my reformatted. You see that I went from this horizontal layout with everything to a vertical layout with some custom tricks. Uh, a simple caption, uh, you can leave it away if you don't like it. The time is displayed uh, in minutes and seconds rather than in just increments of seconds, which is way easier to read here. Then I have the number of cells, but it's the single cell voltage. I think that's way more readable. Then I just have the latency, the bitrate and the bars here, which represent the bitrate graphically, so to speak. So if you're happy with this, just use it. If you want to modify this, check out the more in-depth version of my tutorial at the end of this video. If you just want to play it back in Videolan, you actually have to rename the original one and rename this here the same way the, the video is named. Because Videolan only uh, finds the subtitles if they have the same name as the video. Open it up in Videolan and now you see my custom telemetry which yeah, admittedly it's a bit large. <laughs> I think you can also change the subtitle display in the settings somewhere in Videolan. Okay if you don't just want to use it in VideoLAN for playback, but if you want to use it in your projects, found the Xmedia Recode software. It's a very powerful tool. It can do a lot of recoding and video stuff, but we only use it for one simple application being throw in the video here. That's the first step. Then you click the video. I always choose video only because it has an audio track. In the video subsection, you need to make sure that you use 40,000, which is 40 Mbit or higher. And the maximum for me is 50 Mbit. But uh, yeah, in default, it's like 1,500, which is way too low. So increase it to 40 and 50 Mbit and you're good to go. That's all we need to do here. Then just skip subtitle, even though it te uh, sounds tempting. We need to use filters, but we need to add 
the subtitle filter. That's quite intuitive. So it will be all the way on the bottom. And this subtitle thing here, it has some options, which is nice. But the most important thing is you want to click these three points and give him the correct subtitles. So you just need to align this. Here, my video is the DJI 4. And yeah, this would be the original version and this is the formatted version. So I take the formatted. And now you don't see anything here in the preview, which uh, I don't like this behavior too much. But if you move around here, it updates it and then you see it in the default looks. If you're happy with the default look, you can just hit now add to queue and encode, which will create the video. So if you want to change the default looks, for example, it's way too large now, uh, you can do a lot of the formatting options here. I just saved me a screenshot of my preferred settings so I don't have to think about it. No, you cannot save this as a template. That would be really useful. I use the back color with the transparency of 99. Font size, I found 8 to be a good value. Border style, I like the number 4. And now you get such a nice little box. And here now we have the transparency, which is this dark box with some transparency effect. I like it this way. But you can, of course, experiment with this and make your own style. Then I want the alignment to be over here. So it is uh, aligned left from the text. So if the text changes, it doesn't move around like crazy. But as I said, if we want to use super view, we want to move this box over in the middle. And I do this by margin left and just enter 165. You have to experiment with the number here, but 165 works for me. And then I can also move it down with margin vertical to zero. And after each change here, I click on the blue line here, so I see the update. So now I'm quite happy with how it looks. And now we can uh, encode this or recode this video then everything will be baked into the video directly. To do this, I press Add to Queue. You could do a lot of videos at once and then hit Encode. And it automatically encodes it in the same directory as you are and add a number. So the DJI 4 underscore 1 will be my OSD embedded version of this video. And it's very nice to see that the telemetry box sits there in the center and we see moving values and once again if you like the result already the way it is or if you are used to use 16 by 9 anyways then you are finished already. Thanks a lot for watching. But if you want to learn how to use the 4x3 and convert it to 16x9 by using the super view filter, check out the next step. Why do we use the super view filter instead of uh, using 16x9 in the first place? Because 16x9 crops in. So you don't have a lot of vertical resolution and you want to have this, at least for freestyle flights. So there is an advantage if you go 4x3, you have the whole sensor readout and you can trick it to be 16x9 and look kind of decent. Of course, sorry, this only works with the original DJI cams or with the Nebula Pro, with the newer Polar or Run cams out there, the 60 frames cams. They only work in 16 by 9 mode. Okay, now to the second step. We can use Adobe Premiere and the Super View filter to make it look even better. All we need is an adjustment layer. I can upload you like this little Premiere project so you can grab it from there or you just create it from scratch, which is also not too complicated. We can start by adding our nice video. It's too small. 
considered this in the adjustment layer here. So now I just move the adjustment layer. And in this state, you see what it's doing. It does this weird barrel lens correction where it doesn't correct too much in the center, but stretches it out. It's a transform effect, transform four by three. And here I can just scale up and down as much so I don't see the curvature. And uh, the second effect is the lens distortion 1080p super view. You find these uh, effects in Premiere on default. And here the curvature is this effect. And if you like really do it too much, you see the point where it starts to really fall apart is about here. Ah, that's already too much. Then we get more of a 16 by 9 frame. Yeah. Now we have a lot of vertical resolution. So we don't lose a lot in the vertical. But look what happens to this tree here. It's quite distorted. This is the normal looking tree. This is the distortion tree. And I also at first I didn't like it, but now I kind of like the, the bent shape of the OSD. It, it looks like an OSD that would be showed inside your helmet or stuff. So I kind of like how this looks, but it's also personal preference. Okay, while we're in Premiere, the tip of how I encode videos. As I said, my timeline is set to 2560 by 1440 and 60 frames. That's what I found the best compromise of quality and upscaling because my video is way smaller than, than what I render it to. But then it looks better on YouTube. And if we now go to File, Export Media, and I ju just set the borders really small, H264, 2560 by 1440 with 60 frames and 40 to 50 ambits and export.
if you want to modify it to your own likings and customize it, you actually have to modify my script a little bit. I normally use the Notepad++ because it understands the syntax of Visual Basic and uses colors. Here in this section, you don't actually have to touch this. In this segment, um, I fill the buffer, which is then written to the file. So for example, if you wa don't want the DJI telemetry caption, you can just either delete this line or easier you make this, this sign here and comment this. If it's green, it's a, it's a comment. So if we leave this away, yeah, nothing bad will happen. You see, I've already in the default disabled the signal, which is one to four and not very reliable. And also the channel, the DJI transmission channel, I'm not interested to see this. But if you are, you can just uncomment this and then it will be processed. But yeah, that's very in-depth. As I said, if you want to change anything here, uh, maybe make a backup <laughs> before you do it. For this step where we only make a text layer, in the video we can yeah, go way down. We don't need 40 bits for just a text layer. So you could use just, yeah, just remove one zero. Like four to five MBit should be more than enough for the text layer. And in the filters, we need to have subtitle. Yeah, we have it. And use the recording subtitle. And I just want to be aligned here like this. And then I need a filter which is called Drawbox. And this needs to be above the subtitle, which is confusing, but it's the way it is. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for my patrons who make this work possible or more rewarding, literally spoken. Thanks to all you guys. You're amazing. If you found this video helpful, think about how you can support the channel. The easiest way to support me is by just giving me comments or thumbs up or just share my videos. And if you're really into it, check out my Patreon page. Always much appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching. See and hear you in the next one. Bye for now.